Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sophia and today I'm going to share with you my top five tips for getting professional finishes on your dressmaking garments. So just five tips that I think you shouldn't be scrimping on. Um, I know we all like to cut corners and make things quicker but if you actually are striving for your clothes to look very well finished and professionally sewn um, then here are my tips for you. Okay so tip number one is your actual physical sewing. So I know this sounds obvious but if you're not watching your seam allowances and you are a slightly wobbly sewer um, then if someone flips your garment inside out they're gonna notice that. So try to practice how neat your actual sewing is. Um, take your time with it. There's no race, you're not on the sewing beat, there's no time limit for when you're making things. So slow and steady, if you are a slightly wobbly sewer, um, just take it easy and getting those really smooth straight lines when you're sewing um, can make all the difference if someone turns it inside out. So my tip number two is the actual finishing of the edges of your garments. So the raw edges. You don't have to have an overlocker to have a professional finishing garment, but it does make a difference if you're actually finishing the edge. If you leave all your edges raw, it can just look quite tatty on the inside, especially if it's been through the wash once. So practicing your zigzag stitching on the edges of your garments make a real, real difference. Just also for the longevity of the garments, it does make them last longer. They won't fray, they won't come apart, especially if you're using thinner fabrics. So overlocking or finishing the edge is my second tip for just making things look a lot neater on the inside. Also, just to add to tip number two, not having such a large seam allowance so if you're not trimming away the edge, if you have an overlocker and you've done your nice straight line of sewing, um, you can then just run the overlocker through, chopping it off as you go and then finishing the raw edge at the same time. If you're doing it on your machine, it doesn't matter if you're zigzag stitching and then trimming or you're trimming then zigzag stitching, um, but try and trim them down so you haven't got, you know, some patterns are a 15 mil seam allowance but you don't want to have 15 mil of seam allowance just always on the inside of your garments I think that that can make it look quite bulky on the inside so trim down your seam allowances because that's another added thing that I think makes it makes a massive difference okay tip number three ironing now I hate ironing uh, and I only ever do it when I'm sewing sorry mum but if you're pressing your garments especially throughout the make it does just make a difference to the actual finishing of them because everything's neater and flatter. So when you then sew the next seam, everything lies the way that you want it. So don't scrimp on your pressing or ironing at all. Um, and there is a difference between ironing and steaming and pressing things. So when you're ironing them, you're sort of like moving and keeping it like smooth and how you basically get the creases out but when you're pressing you're just going directly down and you're just finishing the edges of things so things like a collar on a shirt you don't want to be ironing that because you don't want especially if you just sewn top stitched it you don't want to be running your iron and stretching the fabric in and out of that sewing line that you've just done you just want to be pressing it down so you get a nice and crisp finish on the edge um and I definitely, if you are top stitching your colours, press it before and after your top stitching. Um, but pressing in general can just really help with the finishing of it. And always do it before your edge stitching or before your top stitching. It will make a massive difference to the finish of it. Tip number four, interfacings. Don't scrimp on the notions of a pattern. If they have asked for interfacing, there is a huge reason for that interfacing. Um, you might just think, why do I need a little strip that's only two centimetres wide to go down a button, button placket? Um, I promise you it will make a difference. You don't want a shirt where the button placket, which is down the centre of your shirt, is like all ruckled and like maybe a little bit thin and like the button holes are sagging a little bit. 
that interfacing will make it look nice and crisp, nice and flat, and way more professional. So don't scrimp on the notions. If it's asked for interfacing, definitely use the interfacing and use the type that they've asked for. Um, in general, if you don't really know that much about interfacing, you want your interfacing weight to match your fabric weight. So I wouldn't use a firm weight interfacing on a viscose fabric because it would be so rigid that it would just go from like nice flowy fabric into like super stiff fabric and it would look really strange. So I would use a lightweight interfacing for viscose. If you're using a cotton, then I would use a medium weight. And if I was using, say, a needle cord or a denim, I would use a firm weight interfacing. So, but I'm, I must admit on some patterns, depending on which part you're interfacing, they might ask for a different weight than that. So my advice to you is to go on the pattern recommendation until you've made that pattern in full and then you can make your own decision on whether you want to tailor or change any of those notions yourself afterwards, after you've made it. But to start with, don't think, oh, it doesn't matter, I'll just scrimp on all those things because it will make a massive difference. And my last tip, tip number five, is fit. Uh, don't ever pick up a pattern and say, I'm usually a size 10, so I'm gonna make a size 10 because every pattern is different and every body shape is different. You might be a size 10 on the top in one pattern and a size 14 on the top in another pattern. You might actually check your measurements and in one pattern you're a 10 on your bust, you're a 12 on your waist and you're an eight on your hips. Like you, you just don't know. So always measure yourself and then use the pattern to tailor it to fit you. Fit is probably the, one of the hardest parts of dressmaking, but the basic, basic line is to measure yourself and make the pattern in the size that correlates to your body measurements. Um, and I promise you, just doing that as a starter will make a massive difference. Afterwards, if you want to do you know, a bust adjustment or a shoulder adjustment or, um, I don't know, any other adjustment. You can learn that afterwards, but just as a basic tip, um, never making a pattern just based on what you think you might be um, can make a huge difference to the finish of your garment, just because it looks nicer on you. If it fits you well, you'll wear it more, you'll look better, you'll be more confident, you'll look more confident, and in that you'll look like you've made a professional garment or it would look like a professionally made garment. No one might know that you've made it, but if it looks good on you, then everyone's gonna go, oh, that looks really nice. Like that must be, you know, a high-end blah, blah, or like a custom made blah, blah, um, but you made it. So fit definitely makes a difference. Okay, so I really hope that video was useful to some of you. Um, even if you just take one tip that you might not have thought of, um, then I've done my job. Comment below if you have any questions about anything that I've said in this video, or if you want me to clarify anything. But yeah, I really hope that helps in some way. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time for another video. Happy handmade, everyone.